These fields will soon be home to the UK's first newly designed electricity pylon for nearly 80 years, and work has already begun. Soon, this will be National Grid's training academy to build the first T-Pylon. Although testing has been carried out overseas, this will be the first time people will be able to see the 21st century design set in the landscape. All five of the new T-Pylon family will be built on site. The Ekering test line is really important to us from a construction perspective. We've been building lattice towers for decades. Now with the new T-Pylon we need to be able to develop our construction techniques and maintenance approaches for the T-Pylon in the same way that we can do lattice towers. So here at Ekring, we are going to be building all of the T-Pylon family. However, they won't be spread out as you would normally expect to see within the field. We have the constraints of the site um, and therefore you will see T-Pylons closer together than what you actually will do out in the field. As we start to break ground at Ekering, building the, the first T-Pylon in the English countryside, you know, I've reflected back on the three-year journey that we've been on to take an architect's drawing all the way through to a full uh, live pylon in, in the English countryside. Three years might sound like a long period of time, but in engineering terms, that's, ju that's just nothing. And, and the achievement and the innovation has been brilliant. It's three years since the competition to find the next generation of pylon. The T-Pylon was the clear winner with its shorter height and sleeker lines. National Grid worked with Danish architects Bystrup on designing and finishing an early prototype, with the aim of creating a final design of the pylon. The T-Pylon family comprises of five very distinct designs based on a theme, each with its own role to play in transporting electricity along the cabled span. The suspension pylon is used to support the conductor, where the overhead line route travels in a straight line. The whole conductor assembly is able to swing within defined limits while maintaining basic electrical clearance to both the structure and the ground. The flying angle pylon is used for where the route turns through angles up to 10 degrees. The structure has an additional insulator restraining the diamond arrangement to the mast which allows the insulation limited movement under high conditions. The tension pylon is used where the route turns between 10 and 30 degrees. The pylon crossarm frame not only suspends the conductor but also enables deviation of the route while maintaining the necessary separation between conductors. The gantry terminal is used to terminate the overhead line route. It allows the conductors to transition from a diamond configuration down to cable or substation equipment. The span length is limited to 250 meters with a maximum 30 degree entry angle. The diamond terminal is used to terminate the overhead line route. It allows the conductors to transition from a diamond configuration down to cable or substation equipment. The span length is limited to 250 metres with a maximum 15 degree entry angle. Alongside Ekring, we're also looking to develop a test plan to validate the final designs against our technical and functional requirements. This will enable us to ensure that the pylons are safe and reliable for use on future infrastructure. Work is well underway, but there's still a long way to go, well before the T-Pylon is brought into use. National Grid will need to understand how not only to build, but to install and maintain the T-Pylon for when it's part of the transmission network. The development of the T-Pylon is absolutely great. You know, it offers us a real alternative option when we're actually building new lines in order to connect up new generation. Now, you know, it's not going to be the right answer in every situation, but we think that its lower height and its sleeker design offer some real advantages in certain landscapes, where actually we hope that it's going to be able to reduce the visual impact of what we actually build. National Grid is now working to make the T-Pylon a reality. 
all part of their strategy to minimise the impact of their assets on the UK landscape while still providing the infrastructure we need. It's been a huge journey, but what an engineering innovative success in building that modern infrastructure for the next generation. I think I'll personally be glad when we get from a paper concept to a physical structure that we can all see. A lot has changed over the past 80 years in respect of engineering and design. We're really proud to be able to offer another solution for the overhead lined constructions. I've seen the T-Pylon on a page. I've seen the T-Pylon on a 3D model that we've used down in Somerset to actually see it for real at Ecring. Can't wait. <laughs>